next on list and we got some unfortunate news here from my guy chris delia it looks like it's maybe officially over again for him um just when he thought the coast was clear just when he thought it was a great time to come out and you know put out that apology video which i thought he did pretty well in terms of articulating you know how he's basically felt over the last year addressing some of the com accusations and allegations against him um trying his best to basically illustrate that he's a changed man and that he wants to kind of move on from this period and kind of get back to doing what he does best telling jokes and continuing on with his podcasts but i did question at the time if it if it did if it was premature or if there was a incorrect if the, or if there was a correct way of kind of coming out and apologizing because as we've kind of or as i've spoken about in this podcast i'm still of a firm believer that you know the wrong way to do it is following what brian callen does i'm not sure what the right way is because again i'm not i've never been accused of something like this and i've touched wood it never does happen um but i do know the wrong way to do it is to do what brian callen did now should you be going completely silent for a year plus as callen crystalia has done no it's not been a year plus it's been since june but however it's more than six months probably not you probably should address it head on and try your best to kind of clear your name whatever way you can people will say oh you shouldn't clear your name because it's accusation they should be the ones trying to prove you right cool safe but in the world that we live in at the moment unfortunately things have changed and you basically have to prove that you're innocent as opposed as opposed to your accuser having to prove that you're guilty it just is what it is that's the world we live in it's not fair but that is what it is now can he prove it i don't know once maybe people are kind of put off by trying to fight that in the courts properly because they're afraid of what else may come out of from the story and they're afraid of going up on the stand and stuff and you know court cases are long they're expensive all this shit i get it so maybe putting your head down hoping that people go away it's better to do it but again you know seeing as the amount of reputational damage this stuff does your best your best bet is to kind of address it in some meaningful way when it happens as opposed to kind of laying low and now that Chris D kind of popped his head out from underneath the parapet. Um, another lady has now come out courtesy of TMZ and basically accused Chris D'Elia of stealing his virgin stealing her virginity. It's the headline series the following. Chris D'Elia sued, right? You stole my virginity at 17 and called it hot comedian denies allegations. And I think this might be the first person that's actually put together an actual lawsuit against him. So this is mad, isn't it? Just the day after um, that he, or a couple of days after when he put out his apology or his kind of explanation, I'm back video. So it says the following, Chris Aaliyah had sex with a 17 year old high school student. And she says when she told him his uh, age, he said it was hot according to a new lawsuit and Chris denies the allegation. Jesus Christ, man the comedian is being sued by jane doe for allegedly of course it's um uh, uh, uh okay continue sorry about that go back again the comedian is being sued by jane doe for allegedly violating federal sex child sexual exploitation and child pornography laws she is not suing because the two allegedly had sex when they met in connecticut the age of consent is 16 she's what she's doing for then allegedly violating federal sexual exploitation and child okay cool in the docs obtained by tmz chris alleged victim claims that she communicated with a star over social media in 2014 when she was just 17 and he quickly started demanding news when she uh, she says two months later he invited her to his hotel room before one of his shows uh where they had sex yikes man yikes uh, the woman claims Crystalia demanded eye contact when they had sex and says that when she told him he was 17 and still in school, Chris responded by saying it was hot. Oh my God. And you know what makes this even worse, right? Because his whole press run, re rehabilitation thing, which is, you know, maybe a, a bit exploitative and manipulative, has been to post images and videos of him with his son, who's super cute. But this is not in, you know, when you put these accusations alongside videos of his kid and his diaper, you're like, and him calling a 17 year old hot, you're just like, God almighty, Chris, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. As you know, Chris recently got emotional addressing allegations that he was grooming underage girls online and allegedly exposing himself to several women saying um, sex controlled his life. A spokesperson, for, a spokesperson for Chris in addressing the lawsuit tells us that Chris denies the allegation and will vigorously defend himself against them in court. Good. According to the docs, the girl says she was a virgin before having sex with Chris, who also asked her to send him pornographic videos of her having sex with other boys her age. Oh my gosh. She also claims that he asked her to meet and have sex with his friends. 
Years after the alleged hotel encounter, the woman claims that she was disturbed to see Chris' character in Netflix U as he plays comic who preys on underage girls. She's suing Chris for damages, asking the judge to stop him from possessing or taking any action regarding the alleged pornographic images of her. Oh my God. It's a wrap for the... Like, how are you meant... Again, even if this is, even if this is a false accusation, how can you effectively fight this like i just don't see it like what do, do you have proof that you can show that you didn't have any contact with this person and that she made up all the screenshots because i'm sure you know if this is going this far i would assume she's put together some evidence presented it to some lawyer who thinks that he's got a case enough to go to court again it could be incorrect maybe the lawyer is just taking it on because he knows chris has got a lot of heat on his name and if he takes it to court somebody of his stature won't want to it to be a long drawn out process so he's maybe settling outside of court but this is mad isn't it this also might explain why people just say you shouldn't come out and address stuff why it's better just to kind of hide underneath because i'm I, I wonder if this lawsuit would have ever come to light if he didn't apologize maybe it was always gonna be a thing and they were putting the papers through and maybe with covid you know it takes long to you know uh put court cases together i'm not too sure but I wonder if this is a direct consequence of him putting out his head up the parapet that someone will want to come and snipe. Because it is quite advantageous, right? If somebody is on the ropes and they're really nervous about making a comeback and they make a video and then you have an allegation that's, you know, a bit a bit airy-fairy, but you have one, this is the perfect time to snipe because they're so worried about getting their career restarted that they're willing to just do anything, just settle, just to kind of get it to show up so they can get back on stage. But this is wild, man. It just doesn't end, isn't it? It's just mad. It doesn't end. Again, it should be a wake-up call for everybody in the, in the comedy industry um, in general for when stuff does reopen. There needs to be a real root and stem analysis as to how these guys conduct themselves around women and around fans and shit because part of me just can't understand why some of these guys that have access to all these adoring fans late at night like people's inhib inhib inhibitions are a bit you know loose and whatever it may be why they will specifically go down this route of touching up little kids or uh, you know trying to hook up with girls that are clearly you know bordering on the line of underage i get it you know most men like younger girls and shit but just for self-preservation stuff won't you want to just i don't know hook up with a couple of mills hook up with people a bit your your age whatever it may be like does it really need to be adolescence like does it really need to is that what you that, that is that what can drive you i guess it's different for him maybe because he's allegedly got some sexual addiction or whatever it may be but even with that usually if you've read um um russell brand's book and he talks about his sexual addiction it was more so about just getting his beak wet regardless it didn't matter who the person was a granny you know somebody his age whatever it may be he was just went to you know he was just an animal at that at that stage and his addiction was just taking over every part of his life but this seems like an odd addiction isn't it it just seems like addiction that's only kind of um that's only kind of reserved for girls that happen to occupy the ages between allegedly again between the ages of like 17 and 24 it's just a very odd sort of um approach but yeah man god damn it this does not look well and again what do you do now and if you're a friend that came out and supported the guy in your industry do you come out and support this again do you stand behind him when this other allegation this is like this is mad and again considering the amount of time these guys have been out of business not being able to earn money on the stage the last thing you want to do is be cancelled just to for standing next to somebody who you think might be innocent in it so some of the some of the stuff that i was getting upset about these comedians not standing up for their friends now i get it i totally get it man like this is a lot this is a lot <laughs> this is a lot there's like so many flipping bodies so many flipping victims allegedly again we don't know if they're true or not but it seems like like this guy was getting it in man like god damn it chris Alia, relax he was get like no like I, I just don't get it again maybe it's just maybe it's something psychological about the access when you when you had everything your age up and maybe within your age range the only logical step is to go down in it right and just and then but as you go down it gets more risky and that kind of uh gets your blood flowing right um some way in some odd sadistic way in some noncy way right that kind of gets you going i don't know but i just don't understand it, it doesn't make any sense because most again i'll imagine the majority he's in a unique position like i keep saying because he's a fine star and he's popular with kids and shit but i would imagine a lot or the majority of women that go to comedy clubs and to go watch comedians tell dick jokes at flipping 10 p.m at night are usually women of age so the fact that you purposely go and kind of you know um 
as young as you uh, as young as maybe legally uh permitted is just asking for trouble and now look now look man it's just like fuck me An entire career ruined because you're just too horny it's just madness isn't it again madness 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 but again let me know what you think in the comments down below do you think chris is guilty do you think this girl is out for clout um do you think his career is over do you expect uh brian callen and oh sorry do you expect brendan short to come and say anything on these podcasts again and say uh, if you bring evidence if you've got a court case if you've got allegations if you've got charges if you've got charges do you expect him to say anything let me know in the comments down below i'm interested to know your opinions on the issue let me know in the comments down below